guilty. That was the verdict for former South Carolina attorney Alec Murdoch, guilty of murdering his wife and son in June of 2021. The jury came back with a verdict in just three hours. Our nightcap is still here. What do you guys think? I think the system works. And I think that's an important message, especially when we're talking, Stephanie, about younger Americans, for them to see the system works. I think the other thing is, for me, the role of social media. We hear so many times about social media being bad, doing more harm than good. But you know what? In this case, sadly, ironically, actually did more good than harm. That Snapchat video could have been the final, final straw. All right, well, Alec Murdoch clearly lost the week. I want to go around the horn and find out from each of you who won the week. Who's yours? All right, so Alec Murdoch may not have been the biggest loser this week. I think it might have been the Biden administration at the Supreme Court where they were defending the student loan forgiveness plan. And it seems very likely that the conservative supermajority on the court is poised to strike this down, which brings me to my MVPs. Justice Sonia Sotomayor was one of the only members of the court to actually make... Who you clerked for. For whom I clerked. Who for whom I clerked, who actually made concrete the stakes of this for everyone in the country who has student debt and who is basically hobbled by the amount of student debt that they had. So she focused on them. And then the other MVP, and I think they go together, is Solicitor General Elizabeth Prelogger, who argued this case for the United States. And if there is a chance for the Biden administration, it's going to be because General Prelogger did such a fantastic job making clear that the Republican states who filed this challenge and the private plaintiffs who filed this challenge against the administration should not be in federal court at all. And so if there's any chance, any glimmer of hope, it's going to be because of her. It could already, though, while it won't help any people and their student debt be a political win for Biden, that he has shown the country, I said I was going to do it, I tried to do it, look who stopped me. Steve, who's yours? We don't get a lot of bravado in the economics world. <laughs> No, come there's on. no what do like you mean? action economics. <laughs> there's no action at all. They're going to put animation. But this in week, for you. Janet Yellen, the Treasury Secretary, went to a war zone, went to Kiev. That's hot. I, I hate to do this with somebody whom I cover, but I'm going to name her the MVP for going there. But I'm going to make a point that a story I reported this week: we've frozen 300 billion dollars of Russian assets. There's a big question out there: can we use that money to? Uh, rebuild Ukraine. The legalities are short. Awesome. I would like to see the Treasury and Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, who is my MVP, do more to advance the ball. I'm using that money. I love that one. She's going to need a lawyer for that. <laughs> Melissa? You can introduce her. <laughs> Paula, how about you? Uh, for me, the MVP is the uh, transgender community as a whole. They are just whipping boys for the Republicans. There are 150 uh, proposed bills around the country right, right now, anti-trans bills. And uh, uh, for a group of people that it's very possible you'll live your whole life and never even encounter. Uh, and uh, I think one of the problems is people don't, people don't know enough on the topic. And I highly recommend there is a, there's a video. Uh, all you have to do is Google ACLU trans girl. Uh, specifically, it's about a, a little girl named Kai Shapley, who recently had to move from Texas because she won't be able to get what well, she needs. Well, my question is, if the ethos behind this is, you know, we're, we're exposing our, our young children, you know, these, these hypersexualized drag shows, yet I don't hear anything about the way pop stars perform. I don't hear anything about halftime shows. If you're worried about hypersexualized scenes, just go to your local social media site and, and see what we're doing. Why is this happening? Plus, the very states that a lot of this is happening in that are so concerned about hypersexualizing are the states where they're trying to drop the age a girl needs to be for a guy to marry him. A hundred percent. Gosh, she might be winning my MVP, John. <laughs> I think it was, a tough, it was a tough decision for me. We have a very, very energetic young uh, chair of the, new, of the North Carolina Democratic Party. She was going to get it, but I have to flip and go to the jury. Because what jury? the jury, the jury in South Carolina, Ooh, the Murdoch case. Because you know what? It's public service, right? They, they did a public service, as did the prosecutors in that place. And I think we need, we need to use this opportunity to, to respect and to, and to give a shout out to those who engaged. I like that. Service. Were you surprised that it was in less than three hours? 
I wasn't after he took the stand in his own defense. That's a really risky move, and I don't know that he answered the kinds of questions or opened the doors that he needed to to introduce the kind of doubt that would be necessary for an acquittal. Well, now all the doors are closed, and he is behind bars for life. All right, tonight I am going to share my own personal MVP. Okay, there is one piece of advice I always give my kids, and I got it from Cinderella's mother just before she died. Be brave and be kind. Well, on Wednesday night, my nine-year-old daughter, she lived those words. When her school talent show was announced, nobody really asked her to be in a dance crew with her. She was on her own. But she said, you know what? I'm going to go for it, and I'm going to go for a solo. I want you to watch this. Look out my window, there's a view of other windows. My own museum full of paintings. I look through where everything is clear. It isn't where I am, it's only where I go from here. I'm sharing this for absolutely no news value, <laughs> but because I am the proudest mom in the world, but also because I just want to remind people that performing arts were not invented on TikTok, that Broadway is beautiful, and most importantly, being kind is really cool. So tonight, my kind and brave number one girl is my MVP, but I love all of yours as well, and that takes us off the air.